Good morning YouTube. I am Monster 1970 and today I am on the 2006 Harley Davidson Ultra Classic. Blake has 46,000 miles on it. Just got finished doing some work to it last weekend. And I'll go over some of the work that I've done to it and a couple things that need to be addressed yet. So I have replaced the inner and outer cam chain tensioners on this bike. I didn't know if they had ever been done before and that's a failure point on these engines and with it having so many miles on it figured it was time and I also put a new front tire on did that this past weekend changed the engine oil change the transmission fluid I have to change the primary fluid yet but the drain plug the innards appear to be stripped it takes an allen and it looks like the uh, the hole is stripped out so I need to get a new drain plug I'll probably have to put an easy out in it to get it out of there and then I'll just put a new one in change the primary fluid and I did check the tensioner, the chain tensioner, and that looks good. Doesn't seem to be worn down. Rear tire still needs to be replaced. It's got a good amount of tread on it though. I think the bearings in the head are in the triple tree. In the front steering, I think they're gonna need to replace before too long. I should probably also check the front fork seals make sure they're okay and I'm going to take it in for the inspection another issue that I had was whenever I went to put the quick coupler back on for the fuel right on the tank there it started leaking So, add either the option of replacing the entire fitting, which would probably be over $100, or try to install a replacement O-ring. Well, I went with the O-ring, decided to replace that. Oh, and also I, I had the inner cam bearings replaced. I replaced them. The outer cam bearings I had replaced by a local bike shop. Because I could, I had a hard time getting the inner cam tensioner back on, and I figured I'd just have them install a cam tensioner, and they said I should probably have the bearings replaced because I didn't know if they ever were. Like I said, I got to take this in for state inspection. The radio needs to be fixed yet. It powers on but I don't get any audio so I'm going to pull that out see if maybe it's something simple or maybe I have to replace the entire stereo Pressure's been good. A 32 psi at 2,000 RPMs. Now the thing is, with this being an air-cooled engine, I'm used to liquid-cooled engines, so I'm not sure how these things are supposed to act whenever they get hot. But it's been twice now that after I've been sitting 
in traffic or the bike's been sitting running that I've had a hard time getting it back up to 32 PSI. I've hit like 28. But after it cools down, then it's fine. I was told as long as it's got 5 PSI at idle, that it's good. I don't know if that's true or not, but it does stay at 5 PSI. The oil light never has not come on for me yet. Knock on wood. And it made me think that while I had this apart, I should have probably put an oil pump in it. But I assumed that the oil pump was still good. And it's still functioning. And these don't have your standard type automotive bearings in them. Engine bearings. Uh, these have got uh, roller bearings and one of the forums said that don't expect this to have the oil pressure like a regular engine, regular automotive engine. These are based on flow and not on pressure. So if that makes sense, as this bike, as the engine gets hotter, pressure is going to drop due to the viscosity of the oil getting thinner, but it's still flowing. Just got to keep an eye on it. Got about half a tank of fuel. This ambient air temperature gauge, I got to check that too because sometimes that works. Maybe it's a loose wire. And then other times it's spiked. You might see it bounce back. got to get used to the turn signals on this too. They're, uh, turn signals are different than anything I've ever ridden before. You have one for each side. One on the left, one on the right. And then you can have your four ways if you press both of them. every once in a while that kind of concerns me but I've been checking that fitting and it's not leaking so I'm not exactly sure what that is someone jogging this morning meter gauge is about right. Another thing I noticed whenever this gets hot, the voltage starts to drop some. Now the drop in voltage might affect the oil pressure gauge. I'm not sure. But it, it, it like it'll go around 13 at idle, but it still comes back up to 14. That's charging Looks like at 14. Also, I put in other, I changed out the spark plugs. I put a set of NGKs in. It had the stock, well, I shouldn't say stock, but it had the Harley Davidson spark plugs in it. And that, that made it a little bit of improvement, I think. I'm running a full synthetic oil in the engine which might be another reason why I'm experiencing a drop in oil pressure. I don't know what was running this before. Probably not full synthetic. Running full synthetic in the transmission and I'll be running full synthetic in the primary using Bell Ray oil. Expensive oil. But hopefully it's worth it. We're still holding good oil pressure. Oh, 
Another thing I want to do to this is I want to check the brake. I want to check the brake fluid. It might need flushed. I don't know if it was ever done before. I don't have any records on this bike. No service history. Bike does sit a little bit lower than my V-Star. I was in Iceland and Ireland in April. Got back May 1st. And it was nice over there. It was nice visiting. Uh, we stayed in the castle that we stayed in whenever we got married. So we were over there for a 50 year anniversary at Springfield Castle. Shout out to Springfield Castle. In Limerick, Ireland, Iceland. It was nice. There's a lot of lava. There are, I think there's an active volcano, at least one there. I didn't see any, I saw a lot of steam. Saw some geysers while we were there. And they said that the word geyser, is a Icelandic word. We stayed in Reykjavik and the weather was cold it wouldn't have been as bad if it wasn't so windy the wind was just strong we went to a couple places while we were up there we did a tour so all the geysers went to the Blue Lagoon, went to the Hidden Lagoon or Hidden Springs. Oh, it's all glacier. That was part of the tour. Visited some nice places there. I'd recommend going to see it. There wasn't a lot, like in one part that we were in, there wasn't a lot of vegetation because of all the lava that had been there before but we, whenever we went to Ireland we stayed first at the very northern port of Ireland northern point of Ireland in a lighthouse and I'm working on a video for that we got a tour of the lighthouse and we visited a couple other places while we were there. Had so visited some of the local bars. Had some local beer, local food. Food was great. Supposed to get up to the, is the 86 today. And then it's supposed to rain later this week. Quaker Steak. Out off at 30 tonight. They're having a bike night. Got a couple other projects coming up. We got the got two pressure washers that I need to work on. The one that I fixed before that was leaking oil. That's leaking oil again. That has a keyway that came, the, the Woodruff key somehow worked its way up out of the pump and tore the, oil, oil, tore the seal up again. So I have a, I'm getting a locking collar for that and another seal. The carburetor got some dirt in it so I got to take the carburetor off and clean that out. I 
I'm going to try to get working on the 500, see if I can figure out why the overdrive doesn't work. I don't know how that's going to turn out. I really don't have, or I don't really want to have to split the whole engine. Still running good. I did have this stall. Well, I stalled it once. And I had a hard time getting it started. I couldn't get it started. I it in gear. It was cranking it over. It just would not start. And I put it in neutral. And then it started right up. So I don't know if these bikes will only start in neutral. I'm debating what I'm doing with the V-Star. If I'm selling that or not. The only thing I wanted to do with it. There was, I wanted to look for the oil leak which is a very slow oil leak see if I could fix that and I wanted to put a replacement set of axle bearings in in the rear see now the oil pressure is down Don't hear any tapping. These have got hydraulic lifters in them. So now our voltage is down a little bit. Now you can see that the ambient air temperature gauge is down again. It's not pegged. But it's done definitely not 100 degrees. There it goes. Now it's pegged again. I don't know where that sensor is at. It might just be laying in there somewhere. Until you get used to it, you're kind of wondering if it's going to stall out on you. Oh, I'll tighten up the cables here also for the throttle they were loose More traffic than usual here this morning I balanced this front wheel and it feels real feels pretty good no vibration in it. I was a little. I think the old one was a little bit out of balance. It had those spoke weights on it. I took that. Or, or there was only one weight on it. I took that weight off and I put a couple uh, regular stick-on weights. It seems to be holding on there so far. Putting those, putting a tube inside of a tubeless tire is a treat. Definitely a, an experience. I heated up the tire some. I got a video coming out about that, about swapping out this front tire. But I ended up using heat gun on it. Yeah, we're at 2,000 RPMs, we're about 28 PSI. little lower now the tapping doesn't seem as pronounced I don't see that thing vibrating Joe might have been making that sound.
turned out to be a nice ride in this morning. I forget where it was last night. I was over by Home Depot. And there was a piece of a trailer hitch on the road. That could have been a mess. It wasn't in the, on the bike though. It's in the car. I ended up straddling it. standing out waiting for the food bank to open up food pantry whatever it is I also replaced the I replaced the front engine mount on this bike I think that was one of the first things that I did. And that was actually one out that was pretty worn out. It's a nice riding bike. It's different than the V-Star, but it's a nice riding bike. Shifts nice. It's got decent power. It's it's close to the power of the V Star. It's about the same size engine. I think this is a 1450. V Star is a 1300. this thing should have had a tune on it because they they put the Reinhardt exhaust on it but I don't know if they ever tuned it but it's running the stock air filter but that'll do it hope you enjoyed this video please like share and subscribe and stay safe